life laid down. I give you everything. Hmm. I don't know. There are a lot of songs that I like. I, I've, I've often been uh, known to say that they're all my favorite songs. <laughs> it's sort of like, you know, saying that you have a favorite scripture. Well, they're all favorite. <laughs> but this song has had an impact upon my life the last few years. Every time I sing it, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about how faithful God has been to us. And then I look across the congregation and I see people. You know, being here as long as I have been, you, you get to know people and what's going on in people's lives. And uh, you see them at their worst and at their best. And at their worst may be something that's happened to them that's brought great pain upon their lives. And at their best, you see them on Sunday morning, in spite of that pain, singing a song like this. All my life you have been faithful. Whew. Boy, that speaks. That really speaks to us. And um, with that said, I want us to be in prayer for a family in our church. Uh, they're a very quiet family. Um, I say new to our church. They've been coming for at least a year. Um, Chris and Beth Bailey, uh, they sit back there. Uh, by uh, the Morans back there, and um, he's a kind of tall guy. He's got a, uh, uh, a land landscaping uh, lawn maintenance company, and um, a lot of ladies know who Beth Beth is. If you come on Wednesday nights, in particular, um, so they have been blessed to uh, to be with child. And they had a procedure just a couple of days ago that um, w was very successful. Um, and um, things took a turn for the worse last night. And this morning, they lost the baby. And um, she's 18 weeks. And as we speak right now, she's giving birth. So... We promised them that their church family would pray for them this morning. So let's pray for them. Father, we hurt with our brother and our sister and their family. And we know the pain is very deep. And all we can ask right now, Father, is that they would know how much you love them. And they too, in time, will be able to stand in this building and sing how good God is and how faithful he has been. May they experience your presence right now and know that their church family praying for them. We thank you for this child who is in your presence now. And one day we are promised a great reunion with all of God's people and with our loved ones. And we will sing praises and glory and honor to Jesus. So with deep pain within our hearts for them, we ask you, Father, to meet that very need right now. And in time, in time, bring healing to them, to their family, to the grandparents, siblings, and all involved. Thank you for godly friends who have been by their side. As we give today, we give knowing that you are a faithful God, you provide for us, and in giving today, we, we acknowledge that you are the Lord over everything. We pray that this ministry would be able to continue so that others can be given the truth of the gospel. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
as the uh, offering plates come around, I will say this about Chris, Chris Bailey. Talked to Chris a couple of weeks ago. Chris sought me out. And uh, Chris has been coming to church and been coming to our men's Bible study. And uh, he, um, he's, been, he's been listening. And he told me, he said, Pastor, when I was about 14 years old, I went through the all that you go through. But he goes, for me, it wasn't right. It wasn't real. It wasn't life-changing in any way, long term. And uh, I've committed my life to Jesus Christ, and I want to follow in true believer's baptism. And then he said this, and he said, and, you know, when you have others one day, and uh, you want to fill the baptistry, and, and we have others to baptize, you know, keep me in mind, I'd like to get baptized. I said, brother, we will fill the baptistry if it's just you. Of course, it's got a leak right now, but we, we're working on that, Gerald, just so you know, just letting you know right now. You got to look into that. <clears throat> Our hearts are heavy today for them. We got the, uh, the call last night, and we've been in prayer with them all night. It hits us hard. Um, our little grandson, when, uh, when he was born and he lived a couple of days, uh, he was uh, 23 weeks, and, uh, you know, he was, he, was, he was not very big. And we got to hold him as he took his last breath. And I'm sure they're going to get to hold their baby um, after he had already taken, or she, is it he or she? He? Yeah. She. She. See, that does matter, right? God created us male and female. And um, I couldn't sleep much last night just thinking about them, praying for them. God will be faithful, and He will meet their every need. I know it. Not only because I've experienced it, but I know it because He is faithful and true, and He declares it in His Word. I know I told you last week we were going to get back on the book of Acts, but we're, we're getting there. Uh and there are reasons that I, I don't want to go into as to why I didn't start the book, go back to the book of Acts today. Um, I, want, I want to talk to you about something called conquering fear. You may recognize that um, title page. We, about three years ago, we preached through a series as we were going through the COVID hysteria. Um, but I think what I want to say today comes from a different point of view about this. Take your Bibles, 1 John 4.18. 1 John 4.18. Would you stand with me as we read this one verse? And we look at this concept. I really want to talk to you today about the foundation to conquering fear. Where does it all start? And how do we how do we get to a point in our lives that we are victorious over ungodly fear? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, just watch the news every now and then and and you're left with fear about what could be about what's happening in this world, right? I mean, every day that our kids go to school, there's this, I don't know about you, I'm sure there is in you, it's in me and my kids, I, I got grandkids that go to public school now, and, or any school, it doesn't have to be public school. And you're concerned about their safety. You got fear about the direction of our country, you got fear about what they're learning, you got fear about their friends they're hanging out with, and 
You have fear about whether or not you know you go to tractor supply if you're going to have to deal with some nut job. There's just fear all over the place. Some of us are dealing with the fear of, you know, a medical issue, and we don't have any answers right now. So how do we conquer that which is irrational, that which causes us to be in a state of anxiety, that which creates difficulty in our lives for us and in some ways creates stress, which in turn creates a lot of physical issues and spiritual issues. The Bible tells us in in Romans, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. We have the promises of God, and so right now I want to read a passage of Scripture to you. I want to share with you some things about fear. And what is the foundation of fear, and how do we ultimately defeat it in our lives? 1 John 4.18 says, There is... No fear in love. Now let me just stop right here and ask you this question. I want you to answer me. There is no fear in love. Who is the personification and who is the definition of love? Jesus. So when the Bible says there is no fear in love, it's saying to us there is no fear in Jesus Christ. But perfect love, who is perfect love? Jesus. But perfect love, Jesus himself drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment or torment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. When Jesus rose from the dead and he started appearing to people, what did he tell them when they first saw him? Fear not. He said, have no fear. He's taking away their their anxiety and reminding them that I'm the one who's conquered death, hell, and grave. I'm the one who drives out all fear. You don't have to live in fear. And I know we're in a serious moment here, but let me just say this. That's why I don't watch scary movies. Because scary movies put within me the seed of fear. That Jesus is in the process of driving out. Why would I want to invite it back in the house? And as a matter of fact, if I do watch a scary movie, which I do not like to, and I'm always, I'm conned into it. If I do some kind of way, somehow, I watch them like this. I do. Sometimes I watch like this. I don't like to be scared in movies. I don't like to be scared in life. And that's a spiritual disposition that we get from Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. May I be a vessel for your truth today. And even right now, May you cast out fear out of my spirit that I may be able to be used by you. So speak to us today. We pray it in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Now, some of you may remember this. These are facts that I shared with you three years ago. Several things I want you to see, some fear-conquering facts. Number one, fear not is mentioned 365 times in the Bible. Did y'all realize that? Did you know that? One fear not for every day. I mean, is is that amazing or what? It's not amazing to God, but I mean, it's in the Bible 365 times. The phrase, fear not. One for each day of the year. Man, that is pretty good. You know what? You know what we ought to do? I'm serious. What we ought to do is we ought to have a printout. We ought to print it out. Google it. Go to, um, go to, um, um, just. 
oh, I'm just having a mental cramp here. Cameron, help me out. Uh, Bible Gateway, right? Go to Bible Gateway, put in Fear Not, and then you can generate um, the list of it, and, and then maybe post it somewhere where you can see it every day and read one for every day. It's a good idea, right? I just thought of it, so I think it's good. Anyway, number two, fear creates chaos in our lives. Jesus said, or, or the Word of God says here through, the, through Apostle John, the Holy Spirit leading him, says that, that fear involves torment or involves punishment. Uh, there is, it, it creates chaos in all kinds of ways. So it creates anxiety within us. The Bible says be anxious for nothing, and we're going to look at that in just a moment. But, but it, it creates that within us, and then it can... We can develop all kinds of stress and sickness and uh, relationship problems as a result of irrational fear. It causes us to make all kinds of decisions in our lives. And so we're, we're, we're motivated and we operate by our fear and not by the fact of the Word of God. It creates chaos in our lives. And then fear keeps us from the blessings of abundant living. Fear cripples us, it, <clears throat> it restricts us, and it takes away the promise of the abundant life that Jesus Christ said that we can have. I've come that you may have life and you, that you may have it how, he says, that you may have it abundantly, <clears throat> that you may live it fully. <clears throat> he who the Son sets free is free indeed. We've been freed from this fear. Satan will produce guilt in your life and create unrational fear or irrational fear in your, in your spirit so that you are led by those things and your life is chaotic and you can't live an abundant life. So I want to give you four things in conquering fear that you have to have in your life to drive it out, all right? So first of all, here are the found, here's the foundation. The first thing I want you to see is this. What helps us with overcoming fear? And that is the love of Jesus Christ. The absolute love of Jesus Christ. In verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out all fear. When you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and you see the power of love and what love is all about and what biblical love. Matter of fact, when you read that list in 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous, not boastful, does not seek its own. Um, love is not rude. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. When you read that, you're actually looking at the attributes of the life of Jesus Christ himself. And when you and I receive Christ as our Savior, His love has been lavished upon us. His love has been poured out upon us in such a way that we can enjoy and grow in those same attributes that Jesus Himself is all about. So the foundation to conquering fear is being perfected in the love of Jesus Christ in your life. You know, when COVID was raging and everything was going on, the statistics prove, they prove, that you had a greater chance of dying in a car crash than you did of COVID. You realize that, right? But yet, we were staying at home because we were told to, and we started believing all this irrational fear, you know, that our fellow human was an agent of death, and so therefore we had to hide our, our face from them, and we had to stay six feet apart, and dare not go down the wrong aisle, the, the, the aisle the wrong way in Publix. You would be excoriated and shot, or at least handcuffed, <laughs> or asked to leave, or shunned, or made fun of. Remember that. 
But yet, we had no problem getting in our vehicles every day to go live our lives, to go where we needed to go. And yet, there was a greater chance that we could be killed. Do you know, do you know this fact? I, I bet you you haven't thought about it. But do you know that in our church, in our church, We did what everybody else did for a short time. We stayed at home. We didn't meet here. Remember that? For eight weeks. Remember the very first day we did live stream as a, where we couldn't meet in here. And, and, and our staff, Brother Eric, came up with this great idea because I thought, well, let's just meet in here. Let's have a regular worship service with nobody in here. And he goes, no, let's get in a small room, make it a studio, and let's not pretend we got people there. And I thought, that ah, you're right, you're right. Let, let's, let's, let, me, let me preach to a camera. And I just remember it was the most uncomfortable, most horrible experience of my ministry life. And I remember at the very end, I was so disgusted with my presentation that I said, that was a disaster. And it went live and everybody heard it. I don't know why I'm bringing COVID back up because I hated it and I hated every aspect of it. And all that it did to us, but I'll never forget that as long as I live. It, yeah, it made y'all laugh. Yeah, I can laugh about it too. However, I remember hearing Dr. Fauci, the little, I'm zipping it. That little rat. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but I remember hearing him give a radio interview about eight weeks, eight weeks into our um, exile from meeting together, okay? And someone called him on the radio about the, the, the app called Tinder, I believe it is. Now, I, I, some of these say, is it Tinder or is it it's some kind of hookup app? Is, am I on the right track? I'm looking at some of y'all. Y'all looking at me like, well, I don't know, Pastor, what are you talking about? Why are you looking at me? I, I'm looking at some of y'all because you're tech savvy, okay? You know about all this stuff. But so, and the hookup culture. So basically on that app, you can be in some town and you get on that app and you want to hook up that night. You know, you know what I mean by that, okay? That's as far as I need to go with that. And and, and, and then you, you, could, you could hook up. Okay. So they were asking him, in the middle of COVID, eight weeks into the shutdown and into the lockdown, what should we do about this and can people continue to meet? And he said, as long as you wear a mask, you're fine. I called Cameron. I said, we're meeting this Sunday. The little rat just, just, just came out and told the truth. Okay. So people can be involved in the most intimate physical activity that you, can, you could ever be involved in, and they're safe from COVID, but you can't go to the grocery store and be within six feet of somebody, let alone go to church. That's when I knew. And so I called them, I called Eric, and I said, we're meeting. We're meeting next week. And so we started to meet again. But here's the fact that I wanted, wanted you to hear about in me going on my little rant. Not one person in our church died from or because of COVID. Not one. We had three who got really sick. You're one of them. And you got really sick because you didn't want to go to the doctor like your pastor. So. <laughs> but thank God you did when you did. Not one person. I was told that if we started to meet, one in ten people in our church would die from COVID. Not one person died. I'm grateful for that, right? And God is good. The fear that was caused and created was not rooted in the love of Jesus Christ because Christ doesn't do that to his people. He doesn't torment his people with the constant, constant thinking of death, 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 death. The death cult does that, that we live around, but not Jesus. Now, Jesus wants you to know that your time on earth is limited, but while you're here, he's got a life for you to live. 
And you can't live it if you're scared all the time of everything. Number two, the foundation is not only the love of Christ, but the absolute presence of Christ. His presence. We know His love, and we, we, we know it, we read about it, we experience it. But man, when you have His presence, when you spend time with Him, when you know He walks with you and He talks with you, I heard a clip from Dr. Charles Stanley, by the way, Dr. Charles Stanley, pastor of First Baptist Atlanta, passed away this past week, and uh, 90 years old, he's with the Lord, but a clip from just a few years ago, and he was saying, and I told this to our Sunday school class this morning, he was saying that, uh, you know, people say this, well, when my number's up, when God calls me and my number's up, like, like God's behind a counter, and you got a number somewhere in society, and he just randomly... Hits a computer and it generates a number. Ah, number 6,264. <laughs> You're dead. No. Dr. Stanley said, You're not a number. You're a name. He knows your name. You belong to him. And then he said, When, when God calls me home, he's not calling my number, he's calling me by name, Charles F. Stanley. And he did that this week. And ushered him into the very presence of Christ. See, we have a God that we serve. And we have a relationship with Christ. Isaiah 41.10 says this. Look at what the Bible says here. So do not fear. For I am with you, God says. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you. With my righteous right hand. So he says, do not fear, for I am with you. His presence. He's there with you. Now on the negative side, I tell people, if you're a Christian, Christ lives within you. Wherever you go, you're taking Jesus with you. So be careful where you go. But on the positive side of that, Everywhere you go, you take Jesus with you. You got it? <laughs> he never leaves you nor forsakes you. <clears throat> and when fear comes against your heart or soul, you have him to calm the storm and to say, peace, be still. Call upon me, he says. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. <clears throat> I can identify to some extent with what Chris and Beth are going through. Our oldest was born 2 pounds 12 ounces. She lived. But I remember when we were told she only had a 5% chance to make it. And if I was a praying man, to pray. That's what the doctor told me. He said, because it's out of my hands. And I appreciate his honesty. But I just remember praying that God's will would be done and that she belonged to him. And if God, if you would so choose to allow her to live beyond what she's living, we will raise her in training and admonition of the Lord. She'll always be, be reminded by us that you saved her and that you want to do a work in her life. And I'll never forget the presence of God with me during that time. I'll never forget the presence of God when that very girl herself gave birth to a child who didn't make it. And that same presence of God was there with us, the presence of Christ. So you think about the worst thing that could ever happen to you. I'm looking at some people in this building who got the worst phone call you could ever get to find out that something happened to your child in the middle of the night. And yet, the worst that ever happened to you, the presence of Jesus was still there with you. And he's with you today. Number three, in the foundation of conquering fear. Not only the love of Christ, not only the presence of Christ, but the peace. Peace of Christ. 
You know, people, people have a lot of things in life, these movie stars, these famous people, whoever they are. And they're trying to find this thing called peace through all kinds of things. They're trying to find it through fame. They're trying to find it through things, through achievement, through pleasure. And they can't find it. One of the most successful and famous comedians of all time who made people laugh for a living, who brought if you will, maybe joy or happiness, at least temporary happiness to people through his comedic style, could not find that same happiness or joy or what we would call peace. And he ended up hanging himself, Robin Williams. Look at what Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says. Now, this is a command. I wish it were a suggestion because I violate this command. Do you not sometimes? Oh, my gosh, I find myself violating. I really do. I find myself struggling to, to live up to the standard. But I'm so grateful to God that it's our standard and it can be reached. Do not be anxious about anything. Well, can I be anxious about some things, God? No. But in every situation, oh my gosh, that's, that's everything. That's, that's all of it. In every situation. By prayer. Uh oh, I'm to take it to God first. You know, the old saying is try this, try that. And when all else fails, pray. No, for the Christian, that's the first thing you do. By prayer and petition, meaning in a request, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So, so here it is. Here it is. Before we go to the next verse, here it is. So whatever your circumstance, whatever your situation is, present it to God. And when you do that, this is what happens, verse 7. And the peace of God, which transcends or surpasses all understanding. I mean, human beings can't understand this kind of peace. And the peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Wow. You know, we talk about VIPs, very important people who need security today. Not only VIPs, but People who take stands, uh, people who are standing for righteousness sake and are in the public eye, and a lot of these people are having to employ private security to protect them and their family, Supreme Court justices, private citizens, even people who are not involved in government. They're having to provide basically a guard at their house. Some are being threatened so much so that not only do they have protection on the perimeter, but 24-7 they have someone living with them to help protect them and their children. Now the Bible says when you and I give our circumstance, our situations, in all situations, we give our anxious thoughts and our fear, we give it all to God, and we bring it to him in prayer with a spirit of thanksgiving, knowing that God did it all for us. What God does is he sends Jesus Christ, he sends the peace of Jesus Christ to be our security, to be our guard, to protect our most vulnerable part, our hearts, our souls, the things that make us tick, the things that keep us going, the part in our life that makes us get up in the morning and, and deal with the struggles of life. God protects us through the peace of Jesus Christ. So, so <clears throat> fear causes torment and anguish. Faith brings about peace and security. In Jesus Christ. 
So the peace of Christ is the foundation to overcoming fear. Um, Y'all, people spend millions and millions of dollars to try to find this. And they never can. Because you can't buy it. The beautiful thing is that it's not a secret thing. That's only for a select few super spiritual people. Not at all. It is a gift that God gives His people who apply these spiritual principles to their life. And it's available to every Christian. You can go to bed at night in peace. Well, Pastor, what about our country? It's, 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 I mean, look at what's happening. I'm not saying you shouldn't care. But at the end of the day, You've got your role, and you do your part, and then you give it to God, and you let God's peace take care of it. Well, Pastor, I, my, my, I got a kid that's just not living for God. Listen, you do your part. You serve God. You be the witness you can be. You be the greatest parent you can be under Christ and doing it God's way. And they have to own their relationship with Christ, and you got to leave it there, and you gotta, you got you to gotta bathe in the peace of the Lord Jesus, and he will guard your heart from being crushed. God, what about, what about losing a loved one? That too, the peace of Christ will guard your heart. Oh, you might feel eviscerated and destroyed. The Bible says that we're hard pressed on every side. And things are hard and difficult in life. But the peace of Jesus will supersede all of that. And he'll guard your heart. One last thing. I call it the courage of Christ. The courage of Christ. So these four things. <clears throat> the love of Christ, the presence of Christ, the peace of Christ, and ultimately the courage of Christ will help you conquer fear. Joshua 1.9. The promise that God gave Joshua and his people as they were getting ready to cross the Jordan River back in the Canaan from where their ancestors had originally come from. And as Joshua and the younger generation we're getting ready to cross in. God said this to Joshua. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's as simple as that, huh? I mean, there are other... Verses in that passage that are just as important, they're all important, uh, and, and they kind of say the same thing, but this, to me, this one sums it all up. Have I not commanded you? Yes, he has. What did he command us? To be strong and courageous. Well, how can I do that? Well, you don't be afraid, and you don't get discouraged. Why? Because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You're not in this by yourself. You have him. He's there with you. Life can be very discouraging. Life can be full of things to want to make us afraid and scared. But for the believer, we are not under bondage to those things. We don't have to be. Diedrich Bonhoeffer, the uh, godly Lutheran theologian and pastor in 
Nazi Germany who was put to death just a few days before the war came to an end in a Nazi concentration camp. And the Nazis hated him because he was not afraid of the Nazis. And he trusted God. And it looked for a moment that he would probably make it through the war. But they hung him with a piano wire. Knowing that the war was lost. And going to be over in just a few days. In books about his life and in his own book, he talked about having to deal with fear. And he talked about the consequences of that. And he said it's not that he wasn't concerned or that he wasn't potentially afraid of what can happen to him. He reckoned with that, but he realized that, you know what, right is right, wrong is wrong, and truth is truth, and Better to be on the side of truth and fear God than fear man. Think about it like this. If we were to take a survey, what is the number one thing that most of us fear? I mean, let's just be real honest. What? Somebody said it. No, not finances. Death. And most of us who are Christians, we don't fear the concept of of death that we know it's coming. I mean, we realize that. We're growing in the Lord. We just fear what it's going to be like. Right? We want to be able to call the shots of that. We know we have an appointment coming, but none of us know what time it is. What time that appointment will take place? We don't know. And so we have, we have this fear of what we can't control. But my friend, you don't have to be afraid of what Jesus has already conquered. So I've gotten to a place in my life where I'm like, you know what, whatever that day comes, whenever it comes, that's God's business, not mine. I'm not worrying about it. No, I'm not going to go lay down on a train track either. And I'm not going to jump from a bungee cord. Nope. Not doing it. Not getting me on that. No. So yes, we, we can fear those things at times. But our whole faith is anchored to the truth of the resurrection, right? The truth of the Word of God in the resurrection. Jesus overcame death. And He told us, He said, Though you die, you shall live. Okay. So that's good enough for me. Courage, the courage of Christ. It takes courage to stare fear in the face and apply spiritual principles to that fear and drive it out with the truth. Drive it out with the truth. Look. 34, 35 years I've been in ministry, been preaching. Just so you know, just so you know. I still fear standing up and speaking before people. I do. I know you don't believe that, but I do. But I know that I can't allow it to control me because I'm called to do what I do by God. And so I can't give the excuse that I'm scared because 
it's not going to wash with God. Because God's like, it ain't about you anyway. <laughs> and I'm going to use you. And I'm going to work through you. You're the vehicle. So for me, every Sunday is an absolute exercise in employing courageous trust in the Lord because I'm like, God, I don't want to waste these people's time. Why are they coming? They're coming to, no, they're not coming to hear you. They're coming to hear me, coming to hear a word through you. And I'll go home today and I'll collapse. And I'll be like, how did you use my feeble attempt to help anybody? And yet he does. So, I've learned that when you're courageous, you don't have to find it within you. You find it in Christ. And then you let him have it. It's his. Well, I'm scared to be a parent. Well, you know, I, I could, we could talk about a lot of things as to how that happens. But you are. And God prepared you for that. He'll give you what you need if you, if you go to the Word of God. Well, what about being a husband? Well, the you follow the scripture, he's got the plan for you. What about being a wife? I don't know. I don't know if I can submit to my husband's spiritual leadership. Oh, you can. Because that's the way God made you. Well, I don't know if I can love my wife the way Christ loved the church. Oh, you can. Because that's the way God made you. You don't have to fear not being able to live up to those standards. So church, as we got to walk out of this place today, let's conquer that thing. And it's not being conquered by, I'm so strong and powerful, God. It's being conquered by the fact and the truth of the living Word of God because of Jesus Christ who lives in us. He is our peace. He is the love of our lives. <clears throat> he never leaves us. He's always there. And he's given us his promises. Because he lives within us, he has driven out that fear. We don't need to fear anymore. I don't need to fear. I can have an abundant life in Jesus Christ and so can you. Let's stand together as we bow our heads.